Ever since I learned that some people are allergic to tomatoes, all I can think of is how this group of people are missing out on the Nigerian national dish, Nigerian jollof rice. So in today's video, I'll share how to prepare delicious Nigerian jollof rice without tomatoes. Here are the ingredients you will need. I'll put the full list with exact quantities in the description box, so do check it out. Here we have 3 cups of rice. If you want your Nigerian jollof rice to be yori yori, that standalone pieces, the best rice to use is long grain parboiled rice, which is not sticky. You can also use the golden cellar basmati rice, which I have found to cook like long grain parboiled rice. You need a protein for the richest flavor in Nigerian one pot rice recipes. I use beef. You can also use lamb or goat meat. Due to the ingredients used in this recipe, I don't particularly like fish for this jollof rice, but you can use fish if you wish. Then we have vegetable oil for the classic Nigerian cooking. Use tasteless and odorless vegetable oils. Sweet pepper, that's fresh paprika or tatashi. You can use red bell peppers instead of sweet peppers, but bear in mind that red bell peppers contain lots of water. I have two wraps of no seasoning cubes, beef flavor because we are cooking with beef. Then you have carrots, buy carrots that have the deepest carrot color so the jollof rice will pop. These days, I find that some carrots look very pale. You can vary the quantities of carrots you use for this jollof rice. You can see here on a different day, I used a lot more carrots for the same quantity of rice. It's up to you. I'll talk more about the differences the quantity of carrot makes later in this video. One green bell pepper. This one can't decide if it's green or yellow. <laughs> Salt curry powder if you can buy the curry powder made for nigerian cooking perfect because it has a richer flavor than the ones sold outside nigeria thyme white pepper this is optional i'm only using it because i'm addicted to black or white pepper these days and it tastes good in this jollof rice then i have white onion and red onion you can use only red onions I just noticed that I forgot to bring out habanero pepper for this meeting of ingredients, so that one too. Next, clean all the vegetables thoroughly. Deseed the tatashi peppers because even if your blender can blend the seeds, they can make your meal taste better. Here they are, all squeaky clean. I'll prep only the white onions for now because I want to get the steaming of the beef going. Chop, chop, chop and process with a chopper for better absorption into the meat. Beef cleaned very well and placed in a pot. Add the seasoning cubes. I don't know the kind of food gum they use for seasoning cubes these days. They are very hard to crush, so I throw them in there like that, Jerry. The heat will sort them out. Add time and click the like button if you found any part of this video helpful so far. Thank you. Add the white pepper, which is optional. The blended white onions. Stir very well, cover and leave it to steam. Don't add water because we want it to steam in its own juice. That makes the beef tastier and it cooks faster. Over at this burner, I'm setting some water to boil for pre-cooking the rice. Once it boils, add the rice, stir, cover and let it boil for 7 minutes. This is my preferred method of cooking jollof rice. Back to the beef, you can see it's steaming and the aroma in this kitchen is something else. All you need is fresh beef. My favorite part of beef to use is ribs because it's very tasty. And then you need onions, thyme and seasoning cubes. Nigerian jollof rice does not need a lot of spices and seasonings. So these are all the spices and seasoning you need really. Once the beef is pale all over, add some water. Cover and start cooking. As you cook, top up the water when necessary so it does not burn. Back to the rice. After 7 minutes, take it off the stove, pour in a sieve and quickly cool it down with water to stop the cooking process. Pre-cooking the rice does three things or the four things for me. One, it helps reduce the starch content in the rice. 
Two, it softens the rice, making it easier for it to absorb the tasty broth we will cook the rice in during the second missionary journey. That way, the rice is tasty all through. No superficial deliciousness, if you know what I mean. Three, because the starch content is reduced, pre-cooking the rice helps prevent serious burning. I mean, a little bit of burnt jollof rice is good. But that one that we need to call the fire service for, mbao, it's too much starch in the pot that causes the jollof rice to burn, even when the rice is not done. There's a fourth one, but I can't remember it now. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Let me know in the comments. Set the rice aside to drain the water. Now, veggies prep. I have chopped the habanero pepper, now the sweet pepper, paprika or tatashi, and the green peppers. If you're using red bell peppers, same, same. Chop the carrots like so, and the red onions. Look at them. I use the chopper to give them just a few pulses. The aim is not to completely blend them. Yeah, you can see what I'm going for on the screen. Link to my chopper and in fact, all my frequently used kitchen equipment will be in the description box below. Do check it out. If you use red bell peppers, after chopping them, put in a sieve so the water can drain into a bowl. The beef should be done by now, separate them from the beef stock or broth and place in an oven tray. Slowly decant the beef broth or stock into a clean pot. This is just in case there are tiny bones in the broth. This is especially important when using goat meat or chicken. They usually have tiny bones in there. Add some curry powder, maybe a little bit of water. If you used red bell peppers, add that water that drained from it at this time. Cover and bring to a boil. Grill or broil the beef in the oven till golden. You can also deep fry it. When the stock boils, add the pre-cooked rice. What you need is same level of liquid to perfectly cook this pre-cooked rice. <laughs> and we have a perfect match, so no need to add more water. Just taste for salt and add some if necessary. Cover and start cooking on medium heat. On another burner, heat some vegetable oil in a clean dry pot. Add the red onions, fry for a bit. Add the carrots and fry till soft. Add the peppers and fry till well steamed. Then season with salt, curry powder and white pepper. Stir very well and set aside. When the rice is almost dry, add the fried veggies mix on top, spread it out. Compared to when I use more carrots, that's a lot of veggies, man. But yes, very good if you are watching your weight. It means you'll be more filled with less carbs. Cover and cook till the rice completely dries up. If you like burnt jollof rice, leave it to burn a little bit, don't set the pot on fire, you hear? <laughs> and then mix everything very well. The one on the left is with only 3 carrots, while the one on the right is with 9 carrots, man. <laughs> Based on looks alone, which one do you prefer? Let me know below. But here's a heads up, the one with more carrots tastes very carroty. <laughs> If there's anything like that yeah but you get what i mean by now the beef should be golden yes here's the first one the one with less carrots compared with the very carroty one as always i serve it with nigerian salad you guys know there's no way i would serve nigerian jollof rice without greens click my photo that pops up on the screen to subscribe to my channel for more delicious recipes Bye-bye, see you soon.